It's the book of Matthew, chapter 1. Um, we'll start at verse 21. Mm -hmm. And he shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus, right. for he shall save his people from their sins. And who is Jesus' his people? Right. Talking about the Jews. Right. right. So, but then, but then when you go to the book of Acts, it only talks about Paul, who was Saul, and how he was to minister to the Gentiles. Okay. Who were the Gentiles? Anybody that wasn't Jewish. Let's, let me show you something. Let me get uh, 1 Corinthians. That's right. First, first Corinthians 12. You mind if I see that Bible real quick? Which one are you looking for? Bible? Yeah. I got, I got an actual. You got an actual. Oh, there you go, bro. It's like King James Version right there. Go ahead, I'm listening. Uh, um, it's the book of First Corinthians, chapter twelve. I'm gonna start at verse one. Right. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. He were Gentiles. Now, they were Gentiles, and what made them Gentiles? Go ahead. Carried away unto these dumb idols. The idols that the Israelites were worshiping made the Most High almost strip them of their name and not look at them as Israelites anymore. And they were being called and referred to as Gentiles. Right. So when we go to Gentiles in the New Testament, that these are just scattered Israelites that have lost their way and got to be brought back home again. But give me the verse you want you want to go to. Um, go to like uh, John 17, right? Mm -hmm. And um, Jesus, this is where Jesus was praying. Uh -huh. But if you go to 17, 20, first he was praying for the disciples. Mm -hmm. He went on to say in 17, 20, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Mm -hmm. And they all may be one as thou, as thou father are in me. And I and thee, that they also may be one another, that the world is thee, that thou hast sent me. I got you. So what's that? So break uh, break that down for me. You said you said the world again, right? Mm -hmm. Break that down for me. The world. Yeah. So what? So it explains to me the verse you just read. What is it talking about? Talking about the world. Talking about everybody. Everybody. All right. Let me get the Isaiah forty-seven real fast. <laughs> 45 and 17. Come on, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 17. Uh -huh. It says, But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. He shall not be ashamed nor confounded. So hold on real quick. It said, The Israelites are going to be saved. Right? Read it again from the top. Come on, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 17. It says, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord. Israel is going to be saved in the Lord. Right? With an everlasting salvation. This this salvation doesn't change. It's everlasting. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Because in the Bible, Israel is looked at as its own world. So when you get these references in the New Testament talking about the world, this is the world that's being spoken of because that's the, that's the, what the prophecies say right. from the prophets. It's not talking about everybody. So in the Old Testament, right, when um, Abraham, when he made the promise to Abraham that he would be a father of many, of many, many nations. Right. Um, but if you go to, um, if you go to Romans, Romans, oh, Romans 4, okay. 13, mm -hmm. it says, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness. Of faith. So who, who was right. who was given the righteousness right. of faith? So 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 the law came through both, right? And faith came through Jesus Christ. So did uh did Abraham have faith? Yeah. Did Abraham keep the laws of God? We had both, right? I mean he uh, wasn't he wasn't under the Mosaic law. Well, because the Mosaic law came but after. It said, but it says, but it tells us in Genesis that Abraham kept the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Right. Well, he, he was he was justified by faith, the same way he's saying now when Christ came. Was Abraham ever justified by works? By faith. When never, went, never by when any he, works. When he, when he sacrificed his son. And then, what does it tell you about that? We're gonna find. We're gonna read it for you. This is the book. Of, 
It's the book of Genesis chapter 15, and I'll start at verse 5. Right. It says, and he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven. It's talking about Abram. Uh -huh. Abram. It says, and tell, and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Right. And he believed in the Lord. So first, the first thing that he did and what we have to do, we got to believe in the, in the Most High. Belief is your faith, right? right? It's trusting. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Read it on. It says, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he counted it for him for righteousness. Now, you made the statement about him taking uh, his son to sacrifice him, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that, that him taking his son to, uh, to do that sacrifice, what is that considered? That was an act of faith. Is that a work? It was an act of faith. Is it a work? I mean... So think about it. If, I, if, if God says, hey, if you drive to North Carolina, when you get there, there's going to be a great job waiting for you. And the first thing I got to do is believe. Okay, I'm believing what you're telling me. And then I got to do some work oh, to yeah, go. Oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Faith without work. There yeah, you go. Because we know faith dead. without works is dead. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the belief aspect, absolutely, you got to have that faith. Right. But there's also works that come along with it. Right. I thought, I right. thought, see, I thought you were speaking in, in reference to the, the old covenant and the new covenant. No, oh, right? okay. Because the old covenant, yes, that was that was just Jewish law. That was Mosaic law. That was under the Jews, right? But then you had the New Testament, right? The new covenant. Which was for everybody when Christ came. Right. That's the new covenant. So and that's, new, so, and, and that's, and that's by faith. So so the new covenant is for everybody. Yeah. All right. Hebrews 8 and 8 real quick. We're fans. Hold on whatever you got. Yep. Hebrews 8 and 8. The book, the book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 8. Mm -hmm. yeah. For finding fault with them, right. he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, mm -hmm. when I will make a new covenant. Now he's going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel. With the house of who? With, with the, the house, house of Israel. Israel right. And with the house of Judah. Right. So the new covenant is with all 12 tribes. Right. The house of Israel, which was the northern kingdom Israelites. And then the house of Judah, which was the southern kingdom Israelites. All 12 tribes. So that's what the new covenant is is, uh, is is for. It's not for anyone else. Well, can I read? Can I read this? The rest of this uh, Romans. Go ahead. Go ahead. So it says. Well, Romans, uh, we're wrong. Uh, uh, Romans, call the, call the, uh, at Romans five thirteen, right? By, uh, verse, chapter yeah. five thirteen. Yeah. So it I says, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world mm -hmm. was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, mm -hmm. but through the righteousness of faith. Mm -hmm. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. And the promise made of none effect, because the law work of wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed. Okay. And then it goes so on who's saying, that? Who's not that? to that only, mm -hmm. which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Hold on, real quick, real quick, real quick, real, real, real quick. Abraham is the father of who all? Many nations. Is, he, is Abraham the father of every every nation on the earth? Anyone, 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 anyone by faith. Anyone who believes in God and Christ by faith. Okay, so in Abraham's house, which one of his sons were chosen? You're talking about Ishmael and Isaac, because, right? right? Because they said it was so Isaac, Because right? right now, think about this. What you're reading right now, the people that are that are that have written this and that are actually um, speaking through this, these are Israelites. So when it's saying us, it's talking about Israelites. It ain't talking about us and Ishmael. It's not talking about us and Ishmael. It's saying Israelites. So read what you read. Read what you read again. Let's go back through it. I like to read these little slow so we get all the all the uh, the meat off the bone. Yeah, it. Uh, you want to go back to back to what you were reading? Now? Oh, you ain't gotta go all into the time. Uh, it says, talk okay. a it says yeah. as it is written, uh -huh. I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believe in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. Right now, now real quick, Abraham was a father to many nations, correct? Mm -hmm. He was. Ishmael was was uh, was given a great number of numbers. So, yeah, twelve uh, sons. He had twelve tri tribes, if you want to say, also. But him and his mother were kicked out because they were not the chosen seed. She was the bond woman, right? And who was who was the uh, the woman of the spirit? 
the woman of the spirit. Talking about, um, you, you're not Sarah. talking about Hagar, you're talking Sarah. about Sarah. Right? Yeah, right? So Sarah was the woman of the spirit. What child did Sarah have? Isaac. Isaac. And Isaac was the chosen. So Ishmael wasn't chosen. Isaac was chosen. And then when you go from Isaac, then he has 12, or he has Jacob, because Esau's not chosen. And then Jacob's name changed to Israel, and then Israel has 12 sons. And that's where the promise goes through. The promise didn't go to every son. Go ahead, read that. It's the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 6. Right. Not as though the word of God has taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Right. Right. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham right. are they all children. Now, right. do it, now, do it. Read. We're going to keep reading, bro. Hold on a second. Because we got to we gotta go contextually at what's going on during this time. During this time, you had other people that were not Israelites that right. basically were laying claim to the land and saying that they were the chosen people. Right. Very similar to what you got going on in the land today, the exact same way. And in prophecy, the, it tells you that the same thing will be happening at the end. So when it says they are not all of Israel, which are of Israel, it's talking about other people who are not Israelites trying to lay claim to the promises. Exactly. Keep going. Uh, I'm going to read verse 6 again. Not as though the word of God has taken none effect, right. for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Right. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. And it's not because they are the seed of Abraham because there's only one chosen seed line of Abraham. Right. All of Abraham's male descendants are not the chosen seed line. Go ahead. Are they all children? Right. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Which confirms what I was telling you through a paraphrase that Isaac is the chosen seed line. That's where the promises go. Right. So, so, so if you go to... So if you go to, um, let's, let's, get, let's just jump some of this. If you go to um, 11, 11, Romans 11, it says, hold, hold, I on, say, hold on real quick. Let's stay, you're in chapter 11, right? Yeah, well, it, okay, yeah let's, it talks about the Gentile. Get, get we're gonna, the Gentile. Okay, we're going to go to that next. Let's yeah. finish this first. Yeah, hit that to the top. Yeah, verse 4. It's the first, uh, it's the book of Romans chapter 9, verse 4. No, verse 3. No, For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren. Now, who is Paul talking about? His brother. He's talking about um, the Romans right here. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, read that again. Read it again. Book of Romans, chapter nine, verse three. Mm -hmm. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren. Yeah. Who's Paul's oh, brother? Right. So Paul, Paul talking about the Israelites or the Jews. Go ahead. My kinsmen, right. according to the flesh. Right, we know this because it says according to the flesh. Go ahead. Right. Who are Israelites right. to whom pertaineth the adoption? The adoption of sons. So before we can get to Romans 11, we're going to read this first because Romans 11 is talking about the adoption. The adoption of sons goes to the Israelites. That's who it pertains to them. It's, it's, uh, they own it. Go ahead. And the glory right and the covenants both covenants we read that before hebrews 8 and 8 the covenants go to the children of israel right. so the both covenants the old one and the new one go to the children of israel right and the giving of the law right and, and, you, and you made the statement that the law was given to the jews in the old testament this is confirming that go ahead right and the service of God. Right, the service of God, because all the prophets were all Israelites, or uh, of this other chosen lineage. Go ahead. And the promises. And all the promises. So those promises that I was telling you about, like I was stating, they only went through one one lineage, one path of men. It didn't go to all of Abraham's children. Uh -huh. right. So when we go to Romans, Romans 11, now I, we got to figure out, if the adoption is for the Israelites and it pertains to them, then what is Romans 11 talking about? You can call your verse and we'll, we'll read it. No, it's all right. Just, uh, give us the verse and we'll read it. We got it. Let me just go to eight, right? Okay. Eight ahead. one. Eight one says, "There is therefore now no Hold condemnation on. to them which are in Christ Jesus, uh -huh. who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Mm -hmm. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus 
that may be free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us to walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So what is it? What is, what is this talking about uh, walking after the spirit and not after the flesh? I'm listening to you. Okay. John. I want um Romans uh so Romans seven. So so who you think he was talking to when he said that? Was he speaking to everybody? He's still speaking to the speaking to us. He's still speaking to the children of Israel. I'm gonna prove it to you. But. Uh, this is the book of John, chapter 6, and verse 63. It says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Right, so the words, God's commandments, those words are spirit and life. So when it's telling, when it's talking about walking by the uh, by the spirit, not after the flesh, it's talking about keeping the commandments. Right. Now, you agree that the commandments were given to the, to the Israelites. You said, you said that. You said the law was given to Israel, to the Jews. Well, in that particular scripture, he wasn't talking about the law. So he said walk by the Spirit. He wasn't talking so where does that concept of walking by the Spirit come from? The Spirit of Christ. It, it's, it's not anywhere else in the Bible, just there? Um, let me find something. Hold on. All right. You got a point? All right, so if you go to, if you go to, hey, brother, real, uh, real quick, just to, just to add to what y'all, the conversation that y'all was building, you said that uh, the spirit was Christ, and Christ, how did he live? He was perfect. He kept all the commandments, right? So we don't necessarily disagree. If we say the spirit is the commandment, is the law, and you say the spirit is Christ, Christ kept all the laws, just like we supposed to be Christians and keeping all the laws. Right, you know right, right. Well, for so what I think, well, Christ yeah. came to fulfill the law, which we could not do. Okay, let's so listen. No one could fulfill the law, so Christ came to fulfill what man could not do. So all we have to do is believe in Him. Okay, so let's stay. Let's 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 stay back. Let's stay back at the previous point, then we'll get to that point afterward. All right. So let me get a Leviticus. I need y'all cooking these swords. Leviticus twenty-six and verse three. Right, because this walking concept is not something that's a New Testament concept. The walking and uh, the steps that you're supposed to take comes from the Old Testament in the law. Go ahead. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 3. Right? Right if you walk in my statutes and keep my com uh, commandments. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, right? Then I will give you rain in due season. Right. And the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield her fruit. Right. So he's already telling the children of Israel in the law, ultimately when they were given these commandments in the uh, in the wilderness, that they're supposed to be walking after the commandments. So when we look at walking after the spirit, and it tells us that the law is what's spiritual, or these words is what's spirit. It's synonymous. It's, it's together. It's the same thing. So biblically, this, when it talks about something spiritual, it's not always talking about like something in the heavens. A lot of times, it's getting reference to the commandments of God. Uh, one more thing, real quick. Yeah, let me get that seven. It's the Book of Romans, chapter seven, verse fourteen. Uh -huh. For we know that the law is spiritual. So what is spiritual? That's the law the is spiritual. See, the law is what's spiritual. Go ahead. But I am carnal, sold under sin. Right. But carnal sold under sin. So he said, but he's fleshly sold under sin. So don't walk after the flesh. Walk after the spirit, which is the law. That's what this is. It's, it's literally matching the same thing. And we know that contextually it's all to one letter because we just came out of out of Romans where you read that. Okay. So it's a scripture in there where he says um, that the law can be summed up in two commandments. Mm -hmm. So you love God with all your heart and all your soul, right? And to love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. Now, if you jump to if you jump to John 14, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm and I'm gonna wrap it up right there. John 14 says, starting at one, it says, "Let not your no." Actually, we're gonna start at five. Thomas said unto him, "Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know?" Wait, Jesus said unto him, "I what, am." What, the what chapter you at? 
14. 14. Gotcha. I am the way, the right. truth, and the life. Right. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Right. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him, right? And then if you jump down, and if you jump down, it's a little bit what you're talking about. Right. 15, verse 15 says, If you love me, keep my commands, mm -hmm. and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Right. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, and even knoweth him. But ye know him, for he delivered. You know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Right? So how do you, how do you get that Holy Spirit? Spirit? How do you get that Spirit? You got, you got to pray. Just read it again. He told you how to get the Spirit. Say, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if you love me, keep my commandments, and then he'll do what? Keep reading. And I will pray the Father. That's when he'll pray the Father. Uh -huh. You don't get the Spirit unless you keep the commandments. Right. So if you don't keep the commandments, he ain't giving you no Spirit. Right. But well, his commandments is what? To love God with all your heart and all your soul. Which is where? And to love your father. Which is your where, neighbor where, where is that where is that written? Um, it's in here. Where's that come uh, from? Because it, it uh this, somebody got a phone. Did Jesus uh I'm gonna read something for you. Quick. I got you, bro. I got you, bro. Did Jesus, I'm a little rusty right yeah, now. No, you're good, bro. Did, uh, because did Jesus make up any new laws? I mean if you go he 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 said he didn't come to abolish it, so he come to fulfill it. Right? All right, so what's that? So mean? he's basically saying that he fulfilled what we could not fulfill, but the law can be summed up in love God with all okay, your heart. Read, read so he jumps off. Con, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse, uh, I'll start at verse 19. It says, Whosoever therefore, this is red letter, right? It says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. So whoever will break one of these least, even the smallest commandments, something like not eating pork or shellfish, some of these small commandments, not wearing fringes, right? Or, and he says, and whoever teach men that they don't have to do this. Con, con, this is Matthew 5 and 19. It says, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, right. he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Right, so he will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So are so are we supposed to teach teach people that they don't have to keep the commandments? I'm not saying that. I got you. But if you jump to Luke 18, okay. 9. Hold right? on, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Yeah. You gotta you gotta you gotta answer no, that. No, all right. Would you ask me? Read, read it again. I said no, no, I, I didn't say you, I said no. So we gotta keep the commandments. I'm not saying you teach people to break them. But we gotta keep them. They, they, he already told us that. You say the, the whole conversation started on belief. Mm -hmm. So first we gotta believe in Christ, mm -hmm. and then He told us to keep the commandments. Well, well this is my answer to that question right here. If you jump to, <laughs> hold on, listen to me. No, for real. First, right. I got you. First we believe in Christ, mm -hmm. and then He told us we gotta keep the commandments. Right. right. So faith without works is dead, right? And right. also it tells us we already read through this with Paul. Paul said he was sold, he was carnal, sold under under sin, but he said that the laws were made some spiritual. Same concept, right? So the. Faith without works is dead. The two have to go together. You got to believe on Christ, but that belief on Christ was given to a chosen lineage of people, not right. to everybody. That's right. Okay, so look, right? If you jump in 18, 9, right? Go ahead, read it. it says, this is Luke 18, 9. Good. It says, this is a parable. Jesus, Jesus taught this parable, right? Right. It's the Pharisee and the publican. And he spake, and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Mm -hmm. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as the other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes into heaven, but smiled upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. All right, so explain yourself. Basically, it all ties into, you know, just, it's not it's not by works. It's, it, you, you're not justified by works, by following the law. I, I didn't say it's, that it's, the law is all going to give you. Yeah. That's all it's, 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 I said it's, you got to have faith. Right. What, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is God knows your heart. Okay, right. God Relation. knows your heart. But he also, so when this, hold man, on, hold on, when this man repented, he knows our heart, yeah. but he said the heart is deceitful among all, among all things. Right. Above when, all things, that's what, that's what David tells us right. in Psalm. But I'm saying, when, when, this guy right. repented, when this guy repented, right. he repented in sincerity, even right. though he wasn't 
doing everything to a T. You understand? He wasn't doing all this stuff so, so everybody could see. Right. He knew he was a sinner. Right. But when he approached God, he asked God for his mercy and his right. grace. And that's where Christ came. That, that's where Christ came in the picture. So he, because he wasn't, he wasn't doing what? what? What was that guy not doing? He wasn't following the law. No man can keep all the laws. He wasn't no following no laws perfect. at all? No man can be perfect. How, what makes you perfect? What do you mean? Believing in Jesus Christ. That's what makes you perfect? Yeah, let me get it, let me get it, let me get it. It's not, it's a spirit, man. Yeah. It's a spirit. Let me get the uh, Hebrews 10, 10 and 14. In God's eyes, in God's I got eyes. You. Let me get the man. I'm not going to say man's songs. eyes, but in Psalm God's 19. eyes, that's what makes you perfect. Because when you believe in Christ, Christ is your covering. And when God sees you, mm -hmm. he sees his son. Okay. So believing in, believing in Jesus is what makes us perfect. In God's eyes. Can we lose that belief? Can we lose that perfection? I mean, if you fail to believe. Okay. All right, let's go ahead. Read this for him. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Uh -huh. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. So if you want to be born again, or you can convert, you got to start keeping the laws. Right. You gotta start keeping the commandments. But but that's that's what self that's what that's what grace is for. It's, 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 it's a whole new covenant. So it's like it's like the cup the new covenant, it covers you. See Christ atoned for our sins, our past, present, and future. So I got it. so real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick question. Right. Right? What what is a sin? What is a sin? Mm -hmm. You break the commandments. Right. So we can't sin, right? You, mean? you can't sin, right? We all the We all the Are we, we supposed to sin? Are we supposed to? Yeah. No. We so not, we're not, not supposed, supposed to sin, in, right? We're not supposed to intentionally sin. No. So we're not supposed to willfully sin, right? We're not supposed to. If, if, we, if we willfully sin, then what do we lose? If you willfully sin and you don't repent, then well, but repenting is, is to stop sinning, right? Yes, but right. Yes, but Christ okay. died. Good. Well, listen. It's the Book of <laughs> Hebrews, chapter ten, verse twenty-six. Yes. For if we sin willfully, right? after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. Real quick, what, what, what's the truth? What's the truth? Read it. Come on, it's the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 120, 42. So I, it says, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law, thy what? And thy law, thy what? And thy law, law right? Is the truth. The law is the truth. So now read it for him. Read it for him again. Hebrews ten. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter ten, verse twenty-six. Uh -huh. For if we sin willfully, uh -huh. after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. Right. So now, what's the knowledge of the truth? What's the truth? You just read it. The law is the truth. Right. So we sin willfully. We break the law after we receive the understanding of the law. Go ahead. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. There's no more sacrifice. Hold on real quick. There's no more sacrifice for sin. So Christ's sacrifice does not cover you if you keep breaking the laws and your grace is null and void because faith without works is dead, right? Okay. Faith without works is dead, yeah. right? All right, so right? just the answer, no, no, no. Just the answer no, to this. Just the answer to that, uh, that backsliding question. Okay? Oh, I'm good. So First John, right? This is in the New Testament. Starting at chapter 2, it says... My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Right. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. What world is this? We already read this. Right? Israel's the world. Isaiah 45 and 17 was a prophecy that was already set in stone. Hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick. I already said this down and said Israel was the world. Let me, I'm going to read, we're going to read Hebrews 1 and 1, real quick. Yep. It's the book of John, chapter 18, verse 20. And Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. Right. I ever taught in the synagogue. Right. And in the temple, whether the Jews, Jews. Always resort. The world is talking about that world of the Jews. It's not talking about everybody on the whole planet. He wasn't. He wasn't talking to everybody on the whole planet. This is talking about that family, this family that came from one man. All right. So break the Gentiles down for me, because if you're telling me basically yeah. the Gentiles are basically not the world, then right. I mean, 
you can break that down for me. I got you, bro. Go back to the uh, the, the Corinthians one. All praise you, man. It's the book of First Corinthians, chapter ten, verse one. Uh, Moreover, brethren, right? I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Right. So now, the Corinthians, you would say that they are Gentiles, non-Israelites, non-Jews. Correct. That's what just that's what society would say. It says that these Corinthians, their forefathers were under the cloud with Moses. Mm -hmm. So who was under the cloud in the Exodus with Moses? I'm saying you had you had you had Greeks. No, you had no. Um, you didn't have no Greeks. Hellenists, you know, all that type of mm -mm. Yeah, not, not this. Mm -mm. That were were. Converted. You had a mixed multitude, and the mixed multitude was put to death in Numbers chapter 11. So did, did Paul convert a lot of different people all what, over? All what, over what, convert, what converts the soul? The law. I mean, right. The gospel. He took the gospel of Christ to the, right. the new covenant. And what, the good news. Oh, listen. Right? And, what, and what did Christ say that gospel was? He said, if you, keep, if you keep the commandments, then I'll bring the comfort to you. Right? It's, it's, it's a repetitive thing, and it's saying the same thing with different words because the Bible has its own definitions. If we use the definitions of society, we can be we can be spun out of control into a different doctrine. But it tells us that the law is the doctrine in the Bible. So this is what the doctrine is, and we're just kind of showing you that it's not it's not saying what what the what the Christian church has been teaching okay. is that it's saying. So if you jump to Revelation, right? Right. Now, hold on. Let me. Let me. This is the last I, one. Go ahead. I want. I want. I want to finish proving this for you on the Gentiles. No, with Just finish reading that for me, if you, unless you're done. Uh, you're done on that. I'm gonna go. To, you can, give me yours. All right. Go, go to this is in the New Testament. Uh, John chapter seven and verse thirty-five. Right. It says, "Then said the Jews amongst themselves." Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Right? Where, where is Christ going to go? That we're, we're not going to be able to find him where he's at. What? It says, will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles? Right. And teach the Gentiles? Is he going to go to the dispersed mm -hmm. that's among the Gentiles uh -huh. and teach the Gentiles? Because that dispersed, that dias the di uh, diaspora, those Jews were called Gentiles. Right. So if you're not keeping the commandments... Then you've fallen away from the Most High. To convert yourself or to be adopted back, you have to repent. You got to keep the commandments, but you also have to have faith on Christ. You okay. got to have the two. But the people that are being talked about through this whole thing mm -hmm. are all Israelites. Okay, so let me. So this is the last thing. This this is sum that up right there. I think. Um. So if you go to Revelation seven, right? Uh huh. Revelation 7, 1 through 8. I got you. Talks about the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. That, that are sealed, right? Okay. And then if you go down to verse 9, uh -huh. it says, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, uh -huh. which no man could number, right. of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, all right. stood before the throne and before the Lamb, mm -hmm. clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, mm -hmm. and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and until the Lamb. Okay. Right? What? So so I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out when you when you're talking about salvation mm -hmm. and you're talking about Christ, are you just talking that right there, that, that's not that's talking about all nations, all people. It's not okay. just talking about the twelve tribes. I got you. you know, Okay, right. It's the book of Genesis chapter 32 and verse 12. Right. It says, And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea. I'll make thy seed as the sand of the sea. Go ahead. Which cannot be numbered right. for multitude. Right. So this multitude that's being talked about are the Israelites, but I'm going to further prove this. Uh, uh, you can read that. You can give them the outline. Go ahead. Uh, so in your in your Revelation seven and nine, he's going to go into um, uh, the Greek and give you uh, what the what the uh, the meaning is. Go ahead. Uh, that word kindreds right. is uh, uh, phyle. Right. In the in the, in the Greek, which the uh, the biblical usage is in the New Testament, 
all persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob. Now, we also know this. Go to go to uh, Revelation 7 and verse 1. All right. Let me get a second Ezra 2 and 40. And Tobit. Tobit 3 and um, 13, 13 and 3. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 1. Right. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners right. of the earth, uh -huh. holding the four winds right. of the earth, mm -hmm. that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Right. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea or the trees, till we all seal the servants of our God in their forehead. Now, we talked about the servants earlier, and it said those servants were Israelites. Keep on, keep reading. Verse uh, 4. Mm -hmm. And I heard the number of them right. which were sealed, and that were sealed, a hundred and forty and four thousand. And of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Right, so the 144,000 only come from the children of Israel. Right, keep going. Uh, keep going. Of the tribe of Judah right. were sealed 12,000. Right. Of the, uh, so of now the, it starts going through all right, the tribes. Right, right. So contextually what we're reading within this chapter, this big multitude like he read over here, uh, he read in Genesis, it's talking about the children of Israel. Read, uh, read that for me. Uh, this is the book of uh, Second Edges, chapter two, and verse. I started verse forty. Now I don't know. I don't know if you uh, you ever read the Apocrypha before. Apocrypha. Uh, Ezra, I, Ezra, I Ezra, have read it, right? but it hasn't been canonized in other scriptures. So well, I, I, I kind of like you know what I'm saying. I, I, I read it, you know. Right. Open I'm, gonna give, I'm gonna give you two. I'm gonna give you two things. I, I, the Messiah quotes from it. The Messiah quotes from it. The original canon that was put together by the Israelites. Yeah. Uh, during uh, during in the in the ancient world, that canon this is in there. If you go into the only time that this was taken out was by the Protestants. They're the ones that removed it from there. It doesn't it doesn't doesn't match up the Protestant doctrine. But I'm reading this because this has been around and and it modernly has just been taken out. It was never taken out up until about 200 300 years ago. But read uh that second verse is two and uh, forty. God. This is Second Ezra chapter two verse forty. It says, "Take thy number, O Zion." O Zion, Zion will be Israel. Go ahead and shut up those that th that select, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white. Right. So the reason of me reading this is because what you just read, right? When we go into this whole situation here is going into a multitude. It's saying that this multitude is Zion. And Zion, who was clothed in white at the end, in prophecy, it said that this multitude was clothed in white. It's referring to the same prophecy all over again. There's nobody else in the Bible that's sanctified and clothed in white outside of the Israelites. There's not a prophecy that's written about well, that. Well, that's, that's where I have to respectfully disagree.